good morning. I'm leaving City of Knee after five days of complete rest, more or less. But I must say it's done me the world of good, that sea air, relaxation, getting stronger every day. The virus is still in there. It, it's, I'm still not fully recovered. But every day a bit better and a bit better and a bit better. <coughs> Just drains the energy. Anyway, onward and upward. And uh, let's see if we can get some interesting video from today's ride. It's, these guys are in no hurry, are they? What could they teach us? Slow down. Take your time. It's all going to be fine. I'm breathing in shitty diesel fumes from a shitty stinking car that's just past me. It's terrible here. It obviously can't be any bloody emissions tests or anything. Honestly, the environmental movement just can't have reached this far. I don't want to complain about the people. He's probably got no money to do it anyway, to be honest see people living with so little to have a car it's just have it running at all could be absolute luxury yeah my lungs have suffered enough lately on this trip without having to breathe all that in but luckily there's great expenses of emptiness with no traffic and there's plenty of much fresher air to clear the crap out way of life that hasn't changed for centuries. Mixed in with asphalt roads and smelly diesel trucks. The gendarmerie are absolutely everywhere, just standing there. Every junction, I've seen them on this road, every single junction. Two to three of them guys. I mean the state is paying for all this security. There's Surete Nationale, there are riot vans parked all over the towns. There's a gendarmerie out in the country, checking roundabouts and traffic. Then there's the police. It just makes me wonder, is it really all necessary? And is the country, is that the reason why the country feels like a safe place to be? Just pulled into one of these cafe restaurants because it's heating up. It was quite cool this morning. You never know if there's food in these places. You just don't know. And here are the gendarmerie in force. Okay, so I've just had a really nice three egg omelette cooked freshly. I was the only customer there apart from the gendarmerie. Who once they'd had the lunch, they went and took station up right outside the gas station. I've just had a, a lorry go the other way and he flashed his lights at me. So whether he's just warning me that there's uh, another check here and here they are. They're really out in force today. You think, what's this all about? There's a lot of them. It's uh, most unusual. And there's another little town we're coming into. And it's all starting to look so much the same. Sprawling masses of great big concrete featureless blocks. Well, it looks like this ride is turning into a, another flat long slog. It's a warm flat long slog and there's a strong wind. However, I've got two hours to my next accommodation and uh, it's a means to get there so 
I really don't feel in the mood for doing adventurous off-road stuff. Oh, here right there, that's a sewage works. My God, that stinks. Jeez, oh, that is disgusting. <laughs> okay, so now we've got a flat long slog heading into traffic with a stinking, stinking sewer works. when you notice a small bike you don't have the weight to uh, fight against the wind blustered about all over the place oh, you can see the wind whistling across this bloody open plate blasting I've been riding along here for eight years now and there's been this finished bit of road here alongside this one and I'm just aghast because this road is perfectly fine. It's wide, two lanes, straight, you can pass easily. How busy does it get to need another lane there? And it's been there and I wonder how long it's actually been finished. And will it ever be used? The, the strangest, strangest things here. And another police check right out here. These are the guys in white jackets. There's some in white, some in grey. Oh, there's the first sign I've seen for a camel. In fact, I've hardly seen any camels since I've been here. They had some for tourists up north. Since then, none. Remember a few years ago, I was in Oman. And I was driving a Land Cruiser at night through a road similar to this. There were no barriers. But they uh, did warn you about the camels, because there are thousands of them, just wild camels, wandering loose. And they just walk across the road. And, you know, the, the headlights and the moving traffic mean nothing to them. And there are reports of people just smashing into camels. And uh, I, I nearly did it. This black thing appeared out of nowhere and I swerved and avoided it luckily and it really makes the heart race a bit it just shows you what your end it could be any moment so we're just approaching Tan Tan I've not got books, uh, book digs here, I've booked them further on at El Catia a little bit further on so I've still got 30 kilometers to go Oh, there's some camels, look! Oh, and another long straight road. You can see here where the sand blows over the road. Imagine that's uh, something they have to do, keep it clear. Rather than snow clearing, sand clearing. Old Land Rover, there are so many of them here. It amazes me how they keep them going, honestly. So we're getting nearer the coast. I can feel the difference in the air, there's a coolness to it. And here we go. Checks, checks, and more checks. There we have the first camels. So here we are arriving in El Quartilla. I can't believe how cool it is. It's got really chilly. I mean I've been on a three hour ride, gone further south, and it's really hot coming through those desert straits and now we're on the coast and it compared to city where I've left 
this is like uh, unbelievably chilly. Seems very quiet compared to Sydney evening and that was bustling maybe later. That's the one, Canaria Sahara. Oh well, should be safe here with Gendarmerie. This don't seem right. It's part of the fun of these places, finding the actual accommodation. I mean, it shows you on maps me it's here, but then you get there and it sometimes it's not. It's just up this street. I know the place exists, I've seen photos of it on booking.com. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Well, I don't want to sound like the grumpy old man. <laughs> Today, that was not fun, that ride. In fact, it was bloody awful, as you've seen on the video. But now I've checked into this accommodation and it was scruffy on the outside and I was dubious. And uh, it's just as scruffy on the inside. Paint's peeling off the ceilings and the walls. Um, the, showroom stinks although it's clean it stinks and the guy wouldn't give me any shower soap so I booked in here for three nights and I thought well why and so I'm getting out of here tomorrow I uh, hope I can get a night's sleep because I'm going straight back to Sydney if need and if I have to take that awful road again I'll do it otherwise I'll just try and find a way along the coast if I can anyway thanks for watching life goes on